Hey, what's up? Debugger tutorial here on how to find base pointers for pointer chains. This is especially useful if you're working on retro achievement development or just want to level up your debugging skills. Before we jump into the nitty gritty, let me break down what a pointer actually is. If you're new to this concept, it might sound confusing at first, but by the end of this video, you'll be good at it, I'm sure. So a pointer is essentially an address in memory that stores another address, plus an offset. Think of it like a treasure map. The pointer tells us where to go next. Now, when we talk about pointer chains, these are sequences of pointers that eventually lead us to the data we care about, like health, score, or whatever variable we're chasing. The key thing to remember is that most of the pointers in the chain are dynamic, meaning their values change constantly while the game is running. There's one special pointer called the base pointer that stays stable throughout gameplay. That makes it super important because it acts as a starting point for all those dynamic addresses. Alright, so before we can hunt down our base pointer, we need to figure out something crucial. Where the static region ends and the dynamic region begins. Why does this matter? Well, the base pointer lives in the static region, while everything else in the pointer chain is dynamic. Let me show you how this works in practice. So, our fellow PS2 memory expert pointed out that dynamic memory starts differently from game to game, and he actually showed me how to do it, and I likewise don't mind to hand the information over to you. Now we need to grab the game's executable file. Normally you'd look inside the SLUS, or SLES file, since every PS2 game has one. But this game is a bit different. It has two executables, one for gameplay and another for multiplayer. The dynamic region info is inside this file. So what's next? We're gonna use a hex editor. I recommend using this one because it's fast and reads files locally. No need to upload anything. Okay, we hit open, find our file, and we should be presented with something like this. We need to go to offset 18. That means we move down a row and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And right here, we've got a 32-bit value. But hold on, it's in Big Indian, which means it's flipped. To fix it, we start at opposite B. You might be wondering what's B. Well, after 8, 9, it's A and B next, not 10 or 11. This is a hexadecimal calculation, not decimal, obviously. So when we reach B, we hit the end of this 32-bit value. Now let's rewrite it properly. We'll pull up a notepad and type double O, beginning from here, then 12, then 12, and finally 90. That gives us 0x00121290 in Little Indian. But here's the thing, you don't always have to go through this. Most PS2 games have a common address, which is 0x01000080. But Project Snowblind is a little tricky, so we need to go the extra mile to find it. What do we do with this address? We head over to the function panel in our debugger, press G shortcut on your keyboard to search for addresses, paste in the address and hit OK. You should see something like this. If we scroll down a bit, we'll start seeing these arrows and there's a loop there. And if we check out what V0 and V1 hold, we'll notice these are 32-bit addresses. In technical terms, one of them is a load immediate and signed, which loads the upper 16-bit of a register. Another is an add immediate unsigned, which adds the lower 16 bit. That gives us 0x004f5300 for V0 and 0x00577f94 for V1. So the data space between these addresses are called uninitialized data, which means it's set at compile time instead of runtime. Okay, what's this even mean anyway? It means that your base address should be at this range or loop. This is not a strict rule. Some games have base pointers that are not in uninitialized data. A good example is the game I am working with here. So the thing to keep in mind here is this address is the start of the dynamic memory. Now that we've cleared this up, let's move on to the next step. So I've got a bookmarked address for the players held right here. We feed that into the trusted debugger and set a breakpoint 
So normally if you want to trace back what accesses this address, you want to observe what the debugger is pointing to in the function panel. In this case, it's clearly pointing to S2. Now let's see where it leads us. It lands on this value. Double click that sneaky little number and copy the address. What's next? Well, we're gonna search for it in the memory inspector. But first we need to make sure we're searching is in 32-bit aligned. Why? Because pointer values are usually stored in nice, neat 32-bit chunks. Like your favorite snacks come prepackaged in bite-sized portions. Now hit new search, switch that to constant, and paste the value here. Oh, and don't forget to add the 0x prefix. This tells the memory inspector, hey, I'm looking for a hexadecimal value, not some random decimal nonsense. Otherwise, it'll be like ordering pizza but getting salad instead. Not ideal. Hit search, and voila, we see a couple of addresses. Of course, you're probably wondering which one do I choose? Great question. Sometimes we might end up with hundreds of options, but choose an address that comes before the dynamic address. Our dynamic address is obviously higher than the pointer address, so anything above that is just a stack pointer noise. Okay, and now let's test it out in the achievements editor. So it's like a Lego set, you've got all the pieces and now it's just about putting them together correctly, right? Add the address to the achievements editor and switch the flag to add address. Now we're gonna add another address, and this time it's gonna be the offset. The debugger kindly suggests 0x4c0, so let's roll with that. Now right click on the offset, and yeah, it takes us straight to our dynamic address. Alright, this address 0x01a368c8 is obviously a dynamic pointer. That means if I load a different level, the pointer will shift and suddenly we've got a broken link. It's like showing up to a party only to realize you're at the wrong house. What we're gonna do next is repeat the process, yeah, rinse and repeat. And there we go. This is our base pointer for the player's health. Let's have a look at another example. This time we're gonna go after the mag pointer for the carbon weapon. Spoiler alert, it was a real headache for me to figure this out. But I cracked the code open. I already have the ammo address as well as the full pointer chain for it just so we know where we're headed. Let's start with that, shall we? You already know what to do. Take the ammo address and paste it into the debugger. This time around, I'm gonna use write instead of read. What does write mean? You may ask. We're essentially asking the debugger what pointer address is interacting with this dynamic address when something changes. To trigger that change, I'll sacrifice those precious 32 rounds and make the player reload. Dramatic, I know, but sometimes you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet, or in this case, find the base pointer. The debugger now should break right where we want it to. Alright, good job little debugger buddy. That's exactly what we expected, now it's all about following the trail. It points to S0, great. Let's search for that value. And add the address to the achievement editor along with its offset. Easy peasy, okay. Now here comes the tricky part. If you try to add that pointer address back to the debugger, guess what happens? It actually breaks. However, if we take what the debugger is telling us for granted, the search will definitely fail. Okay, let's just disregard that and do what it says. It says A0 with an offset of 0xc. Let's roll with that. And nothing. And this is due to this value being accessed is part of a nested structure, which is a whole other topic I'm not capable of explaining it just yet. The fail likely happens because this offset 0xc is pre-calculated, like 0xc plus 0x4 maybe, plus another offset, which results in another different offset, something like that. Anyways, you may wonder how can I fix this? See, this pointer address isn't currently being interacted with by another pointer address. In simpler terms, 
it's chilling in the corner, not doing anything useful. We need to find a way to wake it up and make it do something. Here's the catch, there's no direct action in the game that affects this pointer. But don't worry, we've got options. What we can do next is look for nearby addresses in the memory viewer that do change their values. Okay, these are our new suspects. When choosing an address, here's the tip I want you to understand. Pick one that comes after the pointer address. Why? Because of offsets. If the offset is large enough to cover the dynamic pointer, we are golden. Pointers can offset many addresses at once. If the offset is big enough, so this works perfectly. On the flip side, picking an address before the dynamic pointer isn't always ideal because data here before the pointer might expand or shrink, breaking our fixed offset. Trust me, nobody likes broken offsets. It's like showing up to a party without pants. After some detective work, I found this address. It's pretty far from the original pointer. But the offset outputs in the debugger is massive here, as you can see meaning it can indeed cover our dynamic address. Well, problem solved. Once we've identified this new address, it's time to repeat the same steps. We can use one of these addresses, for example this one, just remember, the offset shown in the debugger must not be zero. Why? Because an offset of zero won't cover our dynamic pointer range. Instead, we want a nice juicy offset that spans across multiple addresses. Okay, great news. The offset we've got here is huge and covers the dynamic pointer range perfectly. And there we go. 0x004c6aac is indeed our base pointer. Victory is ours, ladies and gentlemen. For those who don't know how to calculate offsets, it's easier than you think. First, add the base pointer to the achievements editor and switch its flag to add address. Then add another address below it and set the offset to 0x0. This tells the system, okay, start hunting from this address. Where's our target address? Right here. To calculate the offset, row 3, column 8 is our target pointer. Add that to the offset address and voila! To ensure everything works, I tested this by switching levels and guess what? Our base pointer always leads us back to the dynamic AMO address. Mission accomplished. And there you have it folks. If I discover an even better approach in the future, you'll be the first to know. Until then, Cheers and see you in the next video.